Hi, and welcome to Meetings and Math. You are here for section 8.1, Volume of Cylinders. Our essential question is, how can you use the area of a circle to find the volume of a cylinder? Today, you will need your Jaguar jobs on section 8.1, a pen or a pencil, a highlighter might be useful, a calculator to keep those calculations moving along, your creativity, your best effort, and always bring your problem-solving skills. Let's begin with some definitions. A cylinder is a prism with a circle for a base, and the volume of a prism is written as V equals capital B H, where capital B is the base area, which we're representing as pi equals R squared, and H is the height of the prism, and R is the radius of our circular base. So how does that translate the volume of a prism to the volume of a cylinder? Well, the volume of the prism is the base area times the height. And so the base area on a cylinder is a circle. So the circular area we represent as B equals pi R squared. And so we can write the volume of a cylinder. So that little sub part is telling us what we're taking the volume of. So when I say sub, I'm talking about those words that we write right here that kind of look like they're dropped down. So volume of a prism or the volume of a cylinder. So we can write the volume of a cylinder as substituting the capital B with the pi r squared. So we could write the volume of a cylinder as pi r squared h. You're going to notice though, I don't tend to do that. I tend to keep with this idea of it's still acting like a prism. It's not really a prism, but I'm going to use that volume equals base area times height to help me out. So when I'm doing these, the very first thing I do is I always start off by beginning by writing the formula. So volume equals the base area times the height. And then the next thing that I do is I write down all of the variables that I see in the formula. And then I start filling in the things that I can find already. So for example, one of the first things I see is the height. So in a cylinder, the height is between the two bases. So here's a base and here's a base. And so the height's going to connect up the two bases. So my height was nine. And so since I found that, I'm going to put my nine in right there. And then I start looking for the next, thing. well, V is what I'm looking for. So I need to find base area. There's nothing in my diagram here that tells me the base area. So I'm going to go do another problem and I'll just go do it over here. I'll come back to this, but I need to go find the base area. So I'm just going to go do another problem. I begin in the same way by writing the formula and writing then the variables that I need to know. The base area is what I'm looking for, so that's not filled in. I need to know a radius. I have a radius. The radius is right here on the circle. It looks like an oval. That's because it's in three dimension. So the radius is right here. It's five, so I fill that in. So I fill in this five, which means now I can substitute it in here. And I have five squared pi. So five squared is 25. We write the numbers in front of the pi, so it will be 25 pi. So now that I have this information, I can transfer that back over to my big problem over here. So I'm going to transfer that right here because that's where I'm keeping track of things. So now I'm going to transfer that here. That's now enough information because I now only have one unknown that I can start doing the problem. So now every time I see a B, I'm going to put 25 pi. So this B is going to become 25 pi. And when I see an H, I'm going to put a nine. So this H is going to become nine. So B became 25 pi and H became nine. So now I'm going to multiply my two numbers together. I'm going to multiply my 25 and my nine together and I get 225. So now I have 225 pi. Sometimes I'm told to leave things in terms of pi. And if that's the case, I would stop right here. But I'm going to keep going because it said to the nearest hundredth. So my pi is now going to be 3.14. So 225 times 3.14 is 706.5 or 706 and 5 tenths 
units cubed. So there's a lot of moving pieces in these, but if you set up kind of your thought process and your skeleton and you leave like your little blanks and say, okay, I just need this piece. Now I'm going to go find it and then I'm going to bring it back. You actually will have better success that way. So now let's look at another one. I've taken away all of those extra like little parentheses. And so it looks a little more blank. So where do we start these problems every single time? We always begin by writing the formulas. What I'd like you to do right now is pause, write that formula and then come on back. Great. You should have written V equals base area times the height. So now that you wrote that, let's go find some things that we know. Write those variables and fill in what you have. Find the ones that you can. So what do we have? So when we look over here, we have to remind ourselves that the height is the distance between the circles. So here's our circles. So what's between those circles? Well, six is on the circles. So between the circles or the bases is right here. So that would be three. So our height is three. Beyond that, we don't have enough information. Now we have to go find the base area. So here's the base area. So I kind of pulled the circle out. So here's the same circle and I pulled it out for us. So here's that. Go ahead and pause this and find the base area and come back. Okay, so what you should have found is that the radius, we need the radius because base is equal to pi r squared. So you should have found that the radius was six. And so you could substitute that in. And so six squared is 36. And so we would write that as 36 pi. So we're gonna take this, see this is B, capital B is equal to 36 pi. So we're gonna take that and we're going to take it right here. And now we have enough information, we can substitute it in here. So B is gonna be 36 pi and H is going to be three. So now let's talk about what this means for just a second. This is saying I have a base area, this right here, that's 36 pi. And this is saying I have three layers of that. So let's kind of look at that. It's like I cut this into almost like a three layer cake, right? It's on its side, but it's a three layer cake. And this first layer is 36 pi, and this layer is 36 pi, and this layer is 36 pi. And I wanna know how much are they when I put them all together? That's what volume is. Volume is taking the same thing and stacking it on top of each other. I'm wanting to know how many I have in the end. These ones just happen to be in a circular shape. So how many of those circular bases, they were circular, I'm gonna just stack them on top of each other. I have three of them. What will it end up being at the end? So now we're going to take 36 times three, that's 108 and the pi is just trailing along for right now. If you were told to leave it in terms of pi, which sometimes you are, that's an exact answer and you would stop there. But we weren't. So we need to multiply it by 3.14 and we get 339 and 12 hundredths feet cubed. These problems are kind of long and tedious. Um, the only way that you get better at them is just to do lots and lots of them. Example number two, find the height of a cylinder with a diameter of four yards and a volume of 88 cubic yards and round to the nearest tenth. So this is an example of why we really want to start by writing that formula. So we're going to write down the formula and then we're going to continue by writing in the variables and film which we have. So find what we can. So one of the things I noticed by reading it is it said it had a volume of 88 cubic yards, which means I can fill in the volume but then I don't really have a whole lot. They talk about a diameter of four yards, which is not the base area or the height. So it looks like I probably need to go find the base area. So we're going to begin that by writing the formula for the base area, which is base area equals pi r squared. But even there, I'm not given the radius. It does talk about diameter though. So if we remember, diameter is four, so that goes edge to edge, but a radius is just center to edge. So we wanna take our radius 
and the radius then would be two because you'd take your diameter and you divide it in half. So we put our radius of two in for the base area. So pi r squared becomes pi times two squared, which is four, but we don't like writing it like that. We write it as base area equals four pi. So now we can take that, which is helpful, and we can take this four pi and we can put it in for the base area. But you can see the variable we're left with now is the H. This one's a little bit different than what we've been doing. So I'm going to substitute in eight for 88 for V and I'm going to substitute in four pi for capital B for the base area. And the H doesn't get substituted in for anything. So 88 equals four pi H. Pi is not a variable. Remember pi is a number. So we're going to treat it just like a number. So this is a number times H. So I'm going to take this number times H. How do we undo multiplication? We undo multiplication with division. So I'm going to divide both sides by four pi. So this right here becomes one and that becomes a big ugly mess that we'll deal with in just a second. Because it said round to the nearest tenth, I'm just going to treat, change this into my 3.14 and I'm just going to do this calculation. 4 times 3.14 becomes 12.56 and so 88 divided by 12.56 is about 7 because it, I think it was 7.00. So to the nearest tenth would be 7.0. I can just put 7. So it's about seven yards because it was in cubic yards, right? And the diameter was in four yards. So that means my height right here is seven yards. Example number three, a jelly jar has a radius of three centimeters and a height of eight centimeters and the jelly remaining has a height of three centimeters as well. How much jelly is missing from the jar? The original problem actually didn't even have a diagram. So I actually provided a diagram for you to try to help you understand what was happening. And we're going to start this by putting as much information as we can onto this diagram to help you understand what's happening. So let's start with the radius. If the radius is three centimeters, that's that part right there. And so that's three centimeters, but then it talks about the height. So this is talking about the full height of this jar. And so that means from top to bottom, it's eight. And then it said it has remaining jelly. So the remaining jelly is three centimeters. So that's that part right there. So that part right there is three. And we want to know how much is missing. So we're not really interested in the volume of this part of it. That's not the part we're interested in. We're interested in the volume of this part up here, which means we need to know the height of that because remember volume is base area times height. So how do we find the height of this part right here? Well, I, if I know the full thing is eight and I'm taking three out of it, that would leave me with this total height. So it's eight minus three is equal to five. So we need to know the volume of this, which has a radius of three and a height of five. So now we can go do that. Just like before, begin with writing the formula, then identify your variables, fill in what you know. We know the height is five. Right now that's all we know. So now we need to go find the area of the base. So this is a base and this is a base. So we can use either one. The radius is still going to be three. So now we find the base area. So the base area, we don't know, but we do know the radius and we need to write the formula base area times radius squared and the radius is three. So we end up with base area equals pi times three squared and three squared is nine. So base area equals nine pi. So we're going to take that nine pi and we're going to put it up here for base area. So now that we have the base area and the height, we can go ahead and plug it into the formula. So volume equals nine pi times five. So we're going to multiply our nine and our five together to get to 45. 
So volume equals 45 pi, and then we'll go ahead and change our pi into 3.14, and we get volume equals 141.3 centimeters cubed, and that's how much jelly is missing from the jar. So something that looked like it was gonna be like one of those, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to start this problem. If we take our time to go through and highlight and dissect each part of it, we actually know much more about the problem. Now that we've done a bunch of these problems, I want you to think about this last question. Why can you use the same volume for a prism as you can for a cylinder? If you can, even explain that to somebody. Thank you so much for joining us in, in this lesson. And I can't wait to see you in our next lesson. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.